what farmers have been noticing for the past uh, decade is things have been getting warmer and we've got really strong warming trends right across Victoria and across Australia. And each decade since the 50s has been warmer. So the science is really strong for that warming trend to continue and we're expecting the next decade to be even warmer still and the one after that warmer than that. So I guess agriculture is really dealing with a, a continuing trend of conditions getting hotter. And there's a, a really great desire and hope that our weather will just get back to normal and I can perfectly understand this. Um, I guess one of the key things is that uh, whether you believe climate change or not, we're saying to farmers, because your industry is so reliant on the weather and what the climate does, it's a time to be really alert and not to have fixed views on this, but just to um, make sure you're tapping into good information as this journey unfolds. And certainly even if you don't know all about the science, if you just look at the existing trends of warming, um, a bookmaker shown that data and if, if asked, what do you think about the next decade? He would say the race favourite is for the next decade to be warmer. This isn't just a blip. We, we certainly know our temperature regimes now are much higher than they have been in any previous droughts. In the World War II drought and the Great Federation drought, um, what's happening now is quite different. It's consistently hotter. We certainly know some of the drivers of those previous big droughts are different and we know here that certainly for Southern Australia and for Victoria in particular, the issue of uh, warmer trends means our catchments are, are running off less uh, water even when we get the same rainfall. But also we've got things like um, the storm tracks of our cold fronts and, and the strength of our high pressure systems. In a warmer world, those high pressure systems are, are getting stronger. So it sort of means this is a different variability now we're moving into. And it's good to hope we might still have the odd wet year and some good inflows thrown in there. But we have had that in the last decade. We've had some fairly big individual events of rainfall and some good individual inflows, but they don't make up for an overriding pattern, which is for warmer and drier. That's here to stay. A warmer climate also means that we, it changes the, the nature of how the plants, our plants and crops respond in terms of they're the ones spending all the time out in the field, they're dealing with the peaks and extremes of temperature. So uh, that's certainly an issue and can and affect um, you know, water use of plants. Um, and also we're, we're looking at issues of, to do with extreme events. A warmer atmosphere has more energy, so, so potentially it can uh, um, produce more extreme weather events. Horticulture businesses are dealing with a whole range of issues to, to stay viable and, and certainly um, there's you know, some very positive markets and that there's a lot of you know, international competition, there's issues with labour and what we're seeing now is climate is actually entering the field. It's not, not just having to deal with climate variability but we've now got a continuing warmer trend that uh, producers have to contend with. So. When we're looking at solutions for uh, dealing with the warmer climate and drier conditions, it has to be considered in the context of all those other issues that horticultural growers are dealing with. Um, but certainly when we're looking at solutions, we know growers have done some amazing work in the past decade at dealing with the warmer and drier situation and looking at water efficiency and, and looking at um, you know, rootstocks and varieties. Um, but there's also other things that, that um, growers have been doing about how they uh, manage the efficiency of their operations and also how they manage their business and the business structure and spreading risk across different climate zones or on scale. Um, they're all really important elements to, to maintaining viability as, uh, as the climate changes. You know, demand for food, there's a bright future, but uh, it's certainly not going to be without plenty of challenges. And when we look at all of the things that growers can do to deal with the warmer climate, there are often a lot of smaller changes, incremental changes that can happen and they're things like varieties or, or harvesting times or season times. But some of the decisions get bigger in terms of how do you deal with these things. We can make short steps and short changes over time but sometimes we need to make bigger decisions which, which are larger decisions which is about the scale of the operation, whether we, we should spread our risk across different climate zones or different water infrastructure systems or whether we look at leasing or you know exiting. I guess there's, a, there's certainly a lot of those pathways have always been there in agriculture. Um, we're seeing those drivers of change are, if anything, accelerating over the coming decade. Well, we've seen an amazing response by growers in the last decade. I mean, if you were thinking back about the changes that Victorian growers have had to go through, uh, you couldn't have predicted 
um, what's unfolded. So the response by growers has been pretty amazing. So it shows what we can do when we put our mind to it. And, and I guess there's a lot of those key learnings are there in the last decade too about how it's about how we manage all of those risks uh, in our business. And certainly growers know that it's not just dealing with the climate issue, but it's also to dealing with all of the other marketing uh, and labour and, and cost supply issues as well. It's how they combined all affect uh, growers. So I guess it's, it's never been a more important time to be really accurately looking at your business and understanding uh, what, what you need for the next decade. Farmers have been really crying out for some some more simpler information that, that's easy to understand on this whole climate story and, that, and DPI has been pretty active at providing some new um, climate risk newsletters and we've got that on our DPI climate risk website and also the Hort Industry Network website. It's got some fantastic work which is really trying to pull out the parts of this story that are relevant for Hort growers and we're doing that in each industry as well. So there's good information there and often those um, those newsletters have uh, good up-to-date stuff about how the season's unfolding, what's some of the latest news about what's affecting our weather patterns, and also what are some of the great tools that are there to deal with it. Because there's a lot of good stuff, as farmers know, sitting on the web, but no one's got the time to find it. These are the places to go to, um, to help fast track where the tools are. If you want to know more about this program, contact your Industry Grower Association or the DPI Customer Service Line, 136 186.